Studio 2's Piano Room. And I'm delighted to welcome Depeche Mode to the Radio 2 Piano Room. Dave Garn is with me now. Good morning. Good morning to you. So good to chat to you again, because I think the last time you and I spoke was about 40 years ago when we were both babies. <laughs> 40 years, that long. I know. Probably. Yeah. And you still got that baby face. How'd you do it? I'll take the compliment now. It used to it used to be something that I really, really didn't like when I was younger, but uh, now I'll, I'll take that compliment. Thank you, Gary. And uh, I can't believe this, but this is the first time you've ever performed at Maida Vale. Yeah, I mean, it was sort of shocking to us too, to be honest, but um, Martin and I, when I first heard about the idea of doing it, I was all over it. I thought it was a great idea and something we'd never d- done before. When we got to London and showed up, it was just, uh, it was kind of mind blowing, to be honest, how the songs transformed and how how unique that felt to actually be in a room with all these fantastic musicians and, and just it all coming together. Really, really was quite special. We both walked away from it, like Martin, you know, could have told me later on, he was just like, I think that's one of the best things we've ever done, you know? <laughs> Let's play some music. What's the first song you're going to do for us today? Walking in My Shoes. It's a song from an album called Songs of Faith and Devotion. It's a song that we have continued to perform live. It's a big fan favourite, but also it's a band favourite. It's something, it's a song that I think in lots of ways sums up Depeche Mode. Take it away. Depeche Mode and Walking in My Shoes from the Radio 2 Piano Room. Uh, Dave Garn is with us. Such a brilliant song, Walking In My Shoes, which is, uh, I think, about to turn 30 years old. What are your memories of um, recording it back in the day? I I don't have many. (laughs) 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 That's that's not a good thing, but um, I I really don't remember recording that song. Um, And uh, it was a particular time when we were all having too much fun um, outside of work, and uh, I guess it caught up with us, but... It's uh, one of those songs that it never it never gets old when you perform it, and it and it always evolves. And over the years, songs do that. If they're good songs, you know they they take on different meanings depending on what's going on in your life at that time and in the world around us. And it's one of it's one of those really. It's like um, it's why we we keep it in the set. Do you know um, a few weeks ago we had Bono and the Edge from U2 in the Radio 2 piano room, uh, and that Bono has that song on his 60 songs that saved my life playlist. Did you know that? Well, I, I didn't know that. No, but I do know he's a fan of the song, and um, you know we've kind of been. Over the years, we've crossed paths many times, you know, different, uh, using Flood as a producer as well, obviously, but we were in a rehearsal room in New York a few years back and playing the song and came out the the rehearsal room, Bono's like standing in the hallway and he was, he was eavesdropping in on the song and kind of, we had a little chat after about it and he told me that it was, it was a, a, one of those songs that, he, he wished he'd written. So you're back with a brand new studio album, album number 15, Memento Mori. Is it true that you needed persuading to do this album? I did. I needed a bit more than a nudge, to be honest. And I think it was a lot to do with uh, what we all went through, you know, d- during the pandemic of just this kind of existential of like, what am I doing? Who am I with? Why am I here? Who are my friends? What do I want to do? All that kind of stuff. And and having the luxury of that choice, which I do and I'm very aware of, when it came around and I'd done a Soul Savers project and we'd done a few shows. We did a few in London that were great, like Westminster Hall, the Coliseum we did. And we did a couple of shows in Paris and Berlin. And I came back, it was around Christmas. And I just, you know, I sat and thought about what I wanted to do and I wasn't sure how I wanted to move forward. So I I got a few phone calls from uh, the band's management and and Martin, and, you know, they wanted to get started on making something. And um, I just, my first reaction was, honestly, why? (laughs) And, and, you know, I kind of, I think I even maybe said that. Why would we do that? It's like, it's so great what we've had. 
why don't we leave it? You know, it was that kind of feeling I had. And so I took a bit of persuaded. And I'm so glad that I I did jump in. Um, Martin said, look, I'll send you a few songs that he'd been working on during the pandemic. I had a few ideas that I'd like demoed myself. We started exchanging some ideas. And then there was a couple of songs that Martin had written that made me kind of, one of them being Ghosts Again, I was like, ah. I'm in. <laughs> they, they pull me back in, you know. It was like they, <laughs> it was like the Godfather thing, you know. But and it's a good thing. And, and this is not a new experience. Like after every tour, usually when we do a Depeche Mode thing, you know, you're doing a record, you spend all that time doing that, then you're promoting it, and then you're on the road for maybe a year, a year and a half. So it's like three years, and uh, I had to really think about it. And also, it's a huge mountain to climb you know we're going out there this summer we're doing a few shows in the states to, to warm up and then uh we go off in the summer we're playing these huge stadiums like 40 sold out stadium shows and then coming back to america later in the year it's a big commitment so you know and it's a lot to carry i love it when i'm up there and when it's working but it's still it's something you after all these years like you said it's been 40 odd years most of my life I've been doing this. Let's have some music. And uh, it's the first single taken from Memento Mori that we've been playing loads here at Radio 2. And you're right. about to uh, perform it with the BBC Concert Orchestra. Tell me about the song. Well, the song was written, actually, by Martin and his friend Richard, Richard Butler from The Psychedelic Furs. Richard and he have been friends for years. And, you know, we go, we go back to, we kind of, we've crossed paths with The Furs for many years. In fact, we opened for them, supported them quite a few times in the early days. And so they remain friends. And many times Richard is kind of like, hey, do you want to do some writing? And Martin's kind of, mm, I don't know, I don't really write with anybody else. Um, he's written with me a few times, we, we we do, but with anybody else, Martin's very much like he writes with himself. But he, Richard reached out to him again during the pandemic, right at the beginning of it. And um, this time Martin was like, all right, have you got any ideas? And Richard had a few ideas and they started throwing things back and forth. And um, this is one of the things that came out of it. I didn't know this. Well, I knew that Martin was writing with Richard during the pandemic. And I, th I think they were going to maybe do some kind of project together. Um, but in the end, some of the songs turned out so well that Martin was like, I want to use this for the band. Uh, you know, are you OK with that, Richard? And he was like, I'm fine by it with that. You know? <laughs> so it's a weird it's a weird thing, but fantastic, I think. And a great. It was a great thing that Martin did. I think it made for me as well. And even when I didn't know who wrote what, when Martin started sending me, sending me demos, it, it, there's a there's a there's something different happening with some of these songs. It's added a, a different element that um, I found really intriguing. Well, we absolutely and love it. Again, is uh, well, uh, one 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 that came out of that instantly when I heard the song. I was like. This is the perfect combination of melancholy and joy. It's both those things. And when you have that in a song, there's something there's something special happens. Well, I think something very special is about to happen now because we're going to hear it together <laughs> with the BBC Concert Orchestra. Ghost Again, the first single from the new album, Memento Mori. How was it performing that song with the orchestra? All you know is how it feels. And as a singer and performer, when you feel that connection with the music and you kind of let go of everything, that's it. I don't kind of, I leave it alone after that. I rarely actually listen to a record that we've made after we've made it. There's something about in that process, you know, it's right and it feels right. I, I kind of don't need to hear it anymore after that. Now then, <laughs> when we knew that you were coming on, we asked our listeners if they had any questions to ask you. So are you up for taking a, a couple of listener questions? Sure. All right. sure. This is uh, AJ. It's AJ here from Buckinghamshire. What keeps you going? You've been so successful. Um, you're amazing at touring and producing new albums and new music. But what keeps driving you to, to do that? Take care, guys. Yeah, that's a good question. Even when I'm reluctant to jump into something new again at first, it's like unfinished business. <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm not done yet. There's more to have. There's more to learn about my relationship with Martin and, and uh, how we make music together. 
how we reproduce that on stage, all that kind of stuff, it still constantly surprises me and it still is challenging. I think when when I feel like it's not challenging anymore, or maybe I'm not giving you what uh, the best I could, it's, then, then I'll know it's time to stop. This is from Joe. Hi Dave, this is Joe from Andalusia. You've been an idol of mine since I bought my first ever single, which was New Life. I'm really interested to know if you have your own idol, musically or otherwise. Thank you. See you in Budapest. Yeah, I, I mean, straight away, even when you were saying that sentence, it's always been and always will be Bowie. Uh, it was Bowie um, from uh, when I was a teenager and uh, I got to know him a little bit like, as well in the last few years of his life. Uh, just because our daughters went to the same school in New York, I would see him sometimes and we'd have a little nod to each other and uh, as, as dads, you know, at school with our, with our daughters. Um, but his music transformed something for me. It gave me the ability to believe that I could imagine something else and create something else and find a some kind of way to navigate my way through life. And it was through music and his music always does that for me. Uh, before we get into your last song, uh, just a reminder that Depeche Mode's new album, Memento Mori, is out now. The band's world tour comes to the UK on the 17th of June with a huge show at Twickenham Stadium. So looking forward to that. And for your last song, it's time for you to do a cover version. So um, tell us what you've chosen and why. Well, I bought this song to Martin and Pete and Christian when we were rehearsing in New York. I've been listening to a lot of Scott Walker, Tim Buckley, like these kind of singers. Like I've been listening to a lot of that music. Um, Mark Lanigan used to send me playlists of songs he would like to hear me cover. <laughs> Thing. And this uh, Sundown was, was one of those songs on a playlist that he had sent me. So there was a couple of special reasons why I wanted to do it. One, I just really loved the song. And two, it was kind of a, for Mark, really. He's not with us anymore. I think it was a beautiful version. And also I felt like there was something about the song that was very, very sort of uh, Depeche Mode, like in, in the lyric. And, and you know, it's it's got this dark content to it that you're not quite sure who this character is and what they're talking about. But there's definitely some dodgy stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> so it's absolutely perfect for you. Yes. <laughs> uh, Dave, thank you so much for joining us today. All right, Gary. Cheers, mate. It's really nice to speak to you. You too. Good luck with uh, Memento Mori. I'm sure the tour is just going to be massive and I look forward to seeing you at Twickenham. All right, mate. Cheers. Thank you. All the best.